Welcome to Fruity Bites, where we discuss the fruits of the spirit one bite at a time. And we have begun with the first and the most important one, love. Basically, true love is demonstrated many times by crucifying the flesh. We will begin today's study with Romans chapter 12, verse 10. Be kindly affectioned one to another with brotherly love in honor preferring one another. In other words, we are to show love tenderly, showing honor, showing respect, and yielding to each other. Romans 12 verse 1 describes this kind of love as presenting your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. These precepts put into daily practice present a challenge with our sinful natures, but with the Holy Spirit's help, it is possible if we yield ourselves, our rights, and our ways, etc. By yielding to the Holy Spirit, you are encouraging unity, which brings a good and pleasant spiritual atmosphere that pleases the Lord God. Brotherly kindness is cultivated with diligence because it does involve difficult things such as willingness to bear one another's burdens and to forgive shortcomings and failures. When we get together, our fellowship is meant to go much deeper than merely socializing. It's not a social club. The purpose of gathering together is to consider how we can lift each other up, to build each other up to brighten up our brothers and sisters in Christ, as well as practically encouraging our daily walk with Christ. 1 Peter 4 verse 8 says, And above all things, have fervent charity or love among yourselves, for charity co shall cover a multitude of sins. The intent of fervent here is to extend or stretch forth with intense love, that is, intentional and sincere, and to continue loving one another this way. Charity here is agape love. What kind of love is that? Well, agape love seeks the well-being of others above ourselves. Agape is witnessed as bearing with one another. Agape love is not a feeling. It's a motivation for action. That is a sacrificial love that voluntarily suffers inconvenience, discomfort, without expecting anything in return, even death for the benefit of another. 1 Peter 1.22 describes our need for Yahuwah Jesus. It says, Seeing ye have purified your souls in obeying the truth through the Spirit unto unfeigned love of the brethren, see that ye love one another with a pure heart fervently. This implies after receiving Christ in our heart, it empowers us with the grace of God. We are given the ability to live in obedience of the truth for the purpose of sincerely loving our brothers and sisters in Christ. In other words, through Christ, we are capable of deeply and sincerely extending a pure love for each other. In Ephesians 5 verses 1 through 2, we are told, to follow in Christ's footsteps because he set an example for us to follow. We are not left to ourselves to figure this out. The manual, the Bible, gives us some guidelines. Take a look. Do we want others to do to us what we have done to them? Matthew 22 verse 39 and Galatians 5 verse 14 say, Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Christ laid down his life for us first. To follow his example, John 15, 13 encourages us to lay down our lives. Yahuwah loved his enemies first and forgave them. To follow his example, Matthew 5, verses 43 to 46 tell us to even love our enemies. This is a sacrificial love that voluntarily suffers inconvenience discomfort for the benefit of another without expecting anything in return. Romans 5, 5 encourages us that we cannot do any of this on our own. We need the Holy Spirit's help. How can we love God and hate the brethren? Knowing he loved every man 
enough to die for every man. How can we love God and not obey his instructions to agape love our brothers and sisters in Christ? It is impossible to love God and please him while ignoring what he says. 1 John 4 verse 7. Beloved, let us love one another for love is of God and everyone that loveth is born of God and knoweth God. Until next time, may we be open for the Holy Spirit to love selflessly, sacrificially, and unconditionally.